Friends, I am Navin Jewel along with Preeti Purohit. Promise we are back again with the second part of our Andaman video. In this video, we are going to take you to the Narkondam, which is a dormant volcano located 160 km east of Port Blair and the active volcano of Barron, which is 140 km east of the Port Blair. Now we start the video, I must thank the Indian Coast Guard for agreeing to take us to the Narkondam and the Barron Islands. We boarded the Coast Guard ship from the Port Blair Harbour. The ship gradually moved towards the open sea. Uh, which was calm, of course, because this was the month of May. The breeze was cool on the deck and the vast Andaman Sea was alluring. As we sailed toward the northeast, the evening setting sun provided a perfect backdrop before we call it a day. The occasional sailor like me, it was a precious commodity to be severed and relished. Next day morning, we were greeted by the rising sun from the Myanmar coast. The red hue of the sky was reflected by the Andaman Sea. It was a great feat to watch, particularly... The sun began to brighten the sky and towards our north we saw an edifice of a rock jutting out from the sea surface. This was Narkondam Island, our destination for next few days. The summit of which is about 700 meters above the sea level and has a depression in the central part. And because of this, the Narkondam, which is in Tamil, which is a Tamil word, pit of hell. And this pit of hell is a boon to the Narkondam Island. I will, will come to it later. Narkondam is currently a dormant volcano. There are some age estimates available for the Narkondam rocks that ranges from million years to thousands of years. And there are some speculative suggestions that the Narkondam probably last erupted around 10,000 years. Geologically, the island emerges from the depth of around 1,000 to 1,500 meter. However, the question remains when did it emerge? Unlike the barren island where there are some estimates as to when the barren surface level of the sea level. The beach is bouldery, although stable, compared to the barren island, which we are going to talk later, because we are going to go there. Therefore, landing on the island is a bit difficult. The Coast Guard ship remains at a safe distance from the island, and people are ferried by the inflatable motorized boat by the personnel of the person who was stationed at the lookout post. As you can see, the boat is coming to offload us from the Coast Guard ship and take us to the island, where we finally landed on the bouldery beaches. The boulder dominated beaches are quite common as I said in the, in the volcanic island. The reason being the steep slopes of the mountain supply continuously the volcanic boulders and the high energy of the sea surfing at the coast keep these boulders rolling. In the process they collide with each other and with time their sharp edges are smoothened due to attrition and become moderately rounded as also imbricated which you can see in these pictures. When we landed at the coast and headed towards the lookout post, seeing the isolation of the small island surrounded by the vast Andaman Sea, it gave me a feeling as if I am going to some fairy land. The lush green vegetation, of course some of them such as the coconut and the banana trees were not endemic to the island, they were planted after the human occupation. I was reading somewhere that the tropical rainforest soils are devoid of the required nutrient for the growth of the plants. How come we have such a luxuriant vegetation. To understand this, a common feature of many tropical rainforests is the distinct buttress roots of trees as you can see in this picture. Now these roots create a widespread root network at the surface for more efficient uptake of the nutrients which occur near the surface because of the rapid turnover time and decomposition of the organic matter such as the leaf litter and organism. Here I would like to emphasize that the Narkondam island is the only island in India where we get the endemic Narkondam hornbill. The geological name is Aceros Narkondami and is recognized as an endangered species in the IUCN Red List. Here it is important to mention that hornbill lives in the forest canopy and makes nest in the tree trunk cavities. Thus the availability of the tree cavities determine the optimal breeding population of the hornbill. The rocks which constitute the Narkondam Island are the andesite. Now, andesite is a kind of rock which is light colored, fine grained, contain 50 to 60 percent silica, unlike basalt, which is a dark colored rocks with low silica content. You can see in this picture. One of the objectives of, of visiting the Narkondam Island was to collect rock samples for age dating and geochemistry. Professor Jyotirandere wanted to collect the youngest lava flow for which we had to go 
close to the thickly covered summit which is the yellow dotted line in the google image shows the path that we followed it the local police personnel volunteered to guide us through the thick forest canopy as we are not aware how to negotiate in this tropical rainforest and you can see in this video we are negotiating through the forest cover visibility is extremely poor and the slopes are unpredictable frequently breaking and with the abrupt steep falls many times we used to come back to the same point from where we we have started this was quite exhausting particularly in humid and warm tropical rainforest we found that we failed to make any appreciable advance frequent detour to the same point from where we began our expedition cause immense confusion dejection and the loss of confidence it was collectively decided that we must call it a day and return back to the lookout post with a hope to make another attempt through a different route the google image shows the orange dashed line was the route taken by us for the second attempt as per the suggestion by the lookout post personnel we decided to make another attempt from the western side of the lookout post location and that was through the perennial stream course it was a wider stream course uh, from the coast and we the climb was gentler but there were small obstructions on the way which we could able to negotiate what we interestingly saw on the way is the is the thick pile of sediments the boulders and pebbles embedded in a ash color matrix a close scrutiny of this deposit indicated that these are the lahar deposit lahar is a javan word which means that during and or after the volcanic eruptions slurry of mud boulders they descend down with a mighty speed and buried everything on their way and they are quite destructive in fact one 9th century shiva temple in java was buried under 6.5 meter thick uh, lahar deposit we were excited that this time we are going to really make it to the summit but unfortunately after a couple of hours we encountered a huge scarp of 50 meter plus and there was no way to circumvent this scarp we had to finally call it a day we encountered few wildlife one was the monitor lizard comfortably basking on the sun and in the evening we found plenty of the coast proximal forest crabs which invariably comes out after the dark to feed the isolated island in the open sea are very good candidate to record the land sea changes in the geological past the white dotted line in the google google map shows our sailing route as expected around the rim of the island we could observe a well preserved watermark on andesitic rocks presence of sea caves which are very diagnostic indicator of sea level changes but they were marginally above the ambient sea level and raised bouldery coast deposits so friends this was the brief experience we had in the narcodam island that we shared with you and as per the schedule finally the coast guard ship arrived to take us to the barren island our lookout post friends with whom we stayed for a week or so ferried us in their only mode of transportation that is the inflatable boat from the coast to the ship that was anchored off so it was a quite a nostalgic moment having deposited us safely on the ship they went back to their abode of aboard the lookout post at narcondam the coast guard ship sailed entire night next day morning we were at the outer periphery of the barren island the volcano was active it was intermittently erupting throwing out lava ash and smoke that you can see in the picture similar to the narcondam island the ship has to be kept offshore and we re- we reached the barren island in a inflatable boat we landed virtually on the lava flow boulders which are of some recent times uh, and we observed that there are multiple lava flows exposed interspersed with the pyroclastic or tephra sediments these flows have been worked out extensively by various researchers that i will not go not go into the detail for further reading i would i'll recommend that you please see the work of professor bondapadhyay professor hayatu said jyoti ranjan ray hal professor helder and rajnish bhutani presently the active volcano vent or crater is located towards the western central segment where a huge around 2 km diameter rim called caldera surrounding it caldera is a spanish word meaning cooking pot and are commonly found associated with the stromboli volcanoes as it is not surprising to see a huge caldera rim around barren island so the pouring out of the magma can be either explosive as we see in the barren island or can flow simply like a molten river uh, for example the recent november 24 indonesian volcanic eruption as you have seen in the video the barren island is an explosive volcanic eruption which is going on intermittently for ages 
the explosive eruptions are caused due to the viscous nature of the magma and the viscosity is because of the trapped gases such as the carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide and water vapor which at times find it difficult to escape easily from the magma chamber what happens consequently the gases builds up the pressure in the magma chamber until it fails to hold it and eventually the magma escapes like steam released from a pressure cooker such eruptions are called strombolian lava flows and the multiple lava flows which rapidly solidify because of the viscosity they they cannot go too far thus eventually give rise to a conical shape of morphology constituted by the multiple lava flows as you have seen the morphology of the narcondum and also now you are seeing the morphology of the barren island during the course of making this video two questions they really haunted me will the island remain the way we see today forever and the second did the island emerge from the sea surface to understand these you must understand that the volcanic islands are the dynamic geological gifts that rise from the deep sea floor by a combination of volcanic extrusions and tectonic activities the moment oceanic island build up breaches the sea surface they have no choice but to compete between two processes one the volcanic addition of the lava that is the mass construction and negotiating with the wave energy of the ocean that is a degradation process so construction and degradation process keep on keep going on once the island emerges from the sea surface if the volcanic activity imagine ceases forever actually the destructive process that is the wave action is going to put the volcanic island keep on retreating the coast by and this may lead to and geological time period i'm talking about a leveling of the volcanic this is a kind of analogy which i am trying to draw from the himalaya for example in himalaya we say that a stock piling of energy because of the abduction of the crust beneath the tibetan plateau keep lifting the himalaya this energy is a potential energy not really go infinitely in the space the time comes as it has come already the uplift and erosion become in a dynamic equilibrium but imagine abduction of the indian crust below the tibetan plate is taken away and the erosive process is going to lower the himalaya in situations only would occur if addition of the new lava ceases forever in the volcanic islands the volcanic islands are going to enter into the phase of the second is to get an answer to when did this the, the this island emerge from the sea surface you need to really date the lava flows above the sea surface which have been dated by in 2007 by halder i came across that paper it gave a range of age from 1.67 to 2.67 million year more recently jyotirindra ray and his co-worker using argon argon dating technique they have dated the volcanic eruption in the barren island to 1.58 or 1.6 million year and according to them with a the caveat they suggested that this could be a time when the barren island probably emerge from the sea surface reply that much need to be known about the chronology of the emergence of an island and i think there is virtually nothing from the narcondam island i would like to share some of my observations which came to my mind while making this video the very first observation to my mind is that what are the processes that led to some of the volcanoes to become dormant others become active why i am saying so because there are two islands that is narcondam and east of narcondam these are the dormant ones but when i come back towards the west southwestern side the the, the barren is active and then when i go further south towards sumatra there are 40 active volcanoes same plate is being subducted having this kind of different volcanic activities going on is it because of the oblique subduction i have no answer probably the experts knows it now the second is the any volcanic island if you say in the in surrounded by the open sea are really ideal geomorphological lo locations understand the coastal process in, resp in response to factors like uplift subsidence and the sea level changes and most importantly the ecosystem response to climate change because mind you these are isolated islands and they will respond very faithfully to the climate for they need to be exclusively preserved for the research activity where they, because they are not very old if i go by the age is less than 2 million year if it's a period of less than 2 million year the ecosystem is still evolved that means it requires large enough time to get stabilized any perturbations by the human probably could lead to unimaginable loss of certain 
endemic species. So with this, I hope you will keep watching Be in the Spring Himalaya. Just wait for our next video, which we are going to bring out soon. Thank you very much for watching.